Welcome to the Hook and Mouth YouTube channel. The purpose of this video is to get you out fishing different locations. If you heard a lot about kayak fishing around the Altona area, this is the video for you. I'm going to sum it all up in one video of where you need to get to, where, where the weed beds are, where the rubbly bottom is, what species are in the area, how to target them, all that type of thing. Stay tuned. G'day, I'm Rob and you're watching part two of kayak fishing for beginners, locations, Altona. If you want to watch part one, click the link above. The reason I made this video series was because I wanted to go fish different locations. However, I procrastinated and didn't want to go because I didn't know too much about the locations. So I thought, well, it'd be nice if I knew a little bit more about these locations, then I'd be a bit more keen to go where to park, what type of fish are in the area, where the weed beds are, all that sort of thing. So that's why I put these videos together for any fishermen just like me who have gone through the same thing. Been fishing Altona for over 40 years, so I've got a pretty extensive uh, bit of knowledge around this area. I've been kayaking this area for about 10 years, so I know a lot of the spots, which should help you out, get out there quicker and get straight into the fish. With this kayak fishing location series, we encourage you to stay to the very end of this video as we always release our next location that we're going to discover. Make sure you stay to the end of this video as we discussed in part one of this series that we'll be giving the details away of our giveaway. In part one of this video series, we covered Altona Yacht Club. We also looked at Miller's Road Ramp. In this video, we're going to look at Altona Beach and we're then going to conclude with Apex Park. A purpose-built artificial reef has been placed at the end of Altona Pier. This reef is in casting distance for land-based fishermen. The artificial reef at times does hold good snapper. It is worth anchoring up your kayak and targeting snapper at this artificial reef. Altona Beach is approximately three kilometers of beach frontage, which means that you can pretty much launch anywhere along here. Altona Beach is fairly shallow inshore and contains a flat sandy bottom for the most part. Yellow lines in this illustration roughly demonstrate whereabouts the drop off is where it goes from around about 2 metres into about 5 metres. You'll find by fishing the drop off that you will get onto some pretty good fish. A number of different species tend to hang around the drop off. There are a number of yellow markers around the area which indicate where the drop off roughly is. The area contains a number of scattered weed beds. Weed beds contain a number of species which will keep the angler entertained for hours. Located on the left hand side of the pier you'll find broken ground and also weed beds. The great thing about this area is that it's only a very, very short paddle for the kayak angler. You'll find yourself in amongst a lot of fish very quickly. This location can either be accessed by launching at Miller's Road Ramp or park your car at the Davy Street car park. The rubbly ground and weed beds in this area are found in between the yellow marker and the yellow marker towards the pier. There are a number of methods that you can use to fish this area, one being getting on the drift and the second anchoring up. However, you might find it a little frustrating if you are drifting this area because of the rubbly bottom. Be prepared to lose a little tackle. So therefore, the best method is to anchor up. The best thing to do in this area is to bring the fish to you. We do that by burlying up. 
there is a great spot to target flathead, pinkies, and also leather jackets. You may come across a couple of different species in this area, including salmon, trevally, and red mullet. Okay, so the best bait I've found for leather jackets in this spot is definitely squid. If you do target the leather jackets, make sure you use a heavier leader. The best bait in this area for pinkies are generally pilchards or squid. In terms of rig, I usually use a flasher rig. The best method is generally drifting for flathead in this area, uh, and the best baits are white bait and small bottled squid. Now the key to this area is definitely to burly real hard. Next location that we'll look at uh, from launching from is Webb Street. There's some good parking in this area for those who have a trailer, which is located on the Esplanade. We advise that you launch between the two groins located in the front of Webb Street. Now you're looking at about a 500 metre paddle directly out between the two groins from Webb Street. In this area you'll find some weed patches. On your way out, ensure that you troll hard body lures. To find the weed patches, line yourself up with about a 45 degree angle from the yellow marker towards the pier. Because this area is made up of a sandy bottom, the best method of fishing is to get on the drift. As I mentioned before, it is a good idea to get on the troll on the way out to the location and you will get yourself onto some good snook. If I'm trawling hard body lures, there's usually two that I'll use. I've got this one here, I'm not sure what brand it is. Uh, it's a silvery colour, it kind of I guess represents a pilchard. I usually take the treble hooks on the back out and go with a single uh, circle hook and leave that treble hook and I take that treble from the front off. That's a pretty good deep diver. Well, it's kind of a mid-range diver and what I do is I make sure I just put a, a ball sinker running back off the main line and running onto there so that sinks it down a little bit deeper if I'm looking in the water channel looking for flathead as well as picking up um, a snook. The other lure I like to run when I'm chasing snook, uh, whenever I'm trolling out to a location, this is this one here. And this, as you can see, really looks like a, um, a pilchard. Again, I replace the treble hooks with this one and put on singles. And that's the, a Rapala. As you can see, the little bib on it is pretty short, so it's a pretty shallow diver. Again, I put a sinker on it, run a sinker back for the main line. Uh, and I pretty much um, get that diving a little bit deeper and I've caught plenty of snook on that snapper and flathead when you put enough weight to get it down to the bottom. Now the main species to target in the Webb Street area is definitely big flathead. There are some really big flathead in this area and there's also some smaller ones which can be caught in great numbers. The best baits that I've found over the years are definitely white bait, squid, and bass yabbies. Woken up, there we go, we've landed him. The white bait. Goodness me. All right. Woo. Yes. Oh, yes. Look at the size of this guy. As I mentioned previously, there is a large drop off. Uh, at Altona Beach here and what will happen is the on the outgoing tide the flathead will sit at the bottom waiting for any um, bait to be washed over the side that's where you want to sit over the top and drift on an outgoing tide across the top and drop your baits right on top of them Now the last location that we're going to look at is Apex Park. There are a number of different launch location sites that we'll go through now. The first area that you can launch from is the end car park which is at Apex Park. This would see the kayak angler launch through the creek system. 
If you do plan to launch from this area, this is the terrain that you'll need to cover in order to get to the launching location. Even on the high tide, it can be extremely shallow in this location and also very, very weedy and muddy underfoot. I don't actually recommend you launch from this location as it can be a really painful journey to get out to the location through the mud. The alternative launching site is about 100 or so metres up the road at Ransom Reserve. It'd still be pretty hard coming out from this position, but it is far better than launching from the creek. This is the first split in the retaining wall where you're able to get a kayak trolley through. You can see it has a concrete ramp going straight from the car park down onto the beach. Here we are at low tide and as you can see it is quite sloshy and muddy and full of weed. If you look up to the right hand side there, you'll see a, a yellow marker. The yellow marker indicates the uh, drop off. I avoid fishing around this area because there's a lot of um, undersized pinkies. Now the two channel markers that you can see out here is where you want to paddle towards. And just to the left of those markers, you'll see boats. Well, those boats are sitting basically right on top of the weed beds. I strongly recommend you eat a few extra wheat bix for brekkie uh, as this can be a bit of a strenuous paddle. The main species that I target in this area are definitely King George Whiting which can be caught in great numbers. If you are going to target King George Whiting make sure you anchor up and you're burly hard. Pippies and mussels usually makes a pretty good burly trail. When it comes to bait, it's the same old suspects here. Pippies and squid are usually what gets the job done. The other species that I target here is squid. King George Whiting and squid both love clear water conditions. So when I do find it's a clear day, I do head to Apex Park and target the both of the species. You can also get on the drift in this area and head towards west towards the bank there and uh, there's plenty of gutters which hold some pretty decent flathead. The flatties are also sitting in the weed patches as well. The best wind conditions are north to northwest. One of the reasons I love this spot so much is because if the big northerly blows up hard when you're in the water, you just paddle west and beach your kayak. From there, you can just drag your kayak all the way home through the shallows and not worry about the risk of getting blown out to Geelong. Here's a quick look at some of the squid jigs that I use down at Apex Park and what I find that um, works well. So let's have a look. So I find that this squid jig here is kind of like an orangey, orangey pink colour, does really well on a clear day. Early morning when there's still not a, not a lot of light, I usually go for this sort of dark colour one. Um, that's probably the two that work really well there. Again, it depends on your lighting conditions, which one you're going to go with. The other ones that work really well is this red one. That's a three, a three ounce. This red one does really well it's out there. Um, this one here again, a darker colour, but silvery, orangey tinge to it. That's another good one out. The most success I have is usually the red, red ones, red to pink, in that location. Now the best way to track your success and plot future success is to make sure you maintain a fishing conditions journal. A fishing journal will put you in the right place at the right time based on your own data. Now let's quickly look at how Hooking Mouth Tackle's fishing journal can help you. As you can see a fishing journal doesn't need to be too uh, elaborate. As you can see here we search by location, here's your date, location that you fished, longitude, latitude, water conditions whether it's murky, clear, water depth, 10 foot, 4 foot. Uh, the water temperature at the time that you're fishing, uh, water surface, is it choppy, is it calm, the wind directions that you're going through, north, west, south, the velocity of the wind, the tide conditions, the incoming, the outgoing, the slack, or the barometer. 
We catered here for about three species, so snapper, squid, King George, whatever you're catching, the volume, the size of the weight, and then it goes through to the second species, and up through your third species, and then to the total column at the end, which gives you your total. Once you've populated your diary with plenty of data, all you need to do then is filter, based on the conditions of the day. For example, if it's northwest and it's calm, the diary will bring you back results of where it is best to fish based on those conditions that you put in. A system such as this can help maximise your fishing results and save you time out in the water. Now, if you want to get your copy of this diary, just watch the rest of this video and we'll show you how you can get it for free. Hey, if you got some value out of this video, give us a thumbs up. If you also enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more sort of similar content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you watch part one of this series, you'll know that we said that we're going to uh, give the details of our giveaway. If you want to get your hands on the fishing diary, all you have to do is this. One, give us a thumbs up. Two, in the comment below, write subbed, S-U-B-B-E-D. And the third thing is send us your email address and we'll send you. And four, you must subscribe to our channel. Diary, and we'll send you out the fishing diary. Next location that we're going to hit up is Werribee South. We'll be covering the boat ramp, Werribee South Beach, the boat marina, and where the best places are to launch, what species are in the area, so you don't want to miss that one. Werribee South is going to be a ripper.